Welcome to another edition of Octagon Circles and Squares, an NBC Sports podcast covering the cage, the mat, and the ring. I'm your host, Stephen Diagostino, and this week we look ahead to UFC 308, a stack card coming to you live this Saturday from Abu Dhabi. To help us break it down, Dan Ige swings by. You might remember Dan, the savior of International Fight Week, stepping up in a big way. He gets rewarded for that by landing on the main card. He will break down not only his fight, but the main and co-main events for 308. Speaking of breaking down the big fights, our betting crew swings by as always to give us some of their best bets and hopefully to win you some extra cash this Saturday. But first, spooky season is here and Peacock's got the perfect new series to celebrate. Hysteria throws it back to the 1980s where a group of high school outcasts form a satanic metal band. When a bizarre series of crimes and supernatural activity follows, a witch hunt leads back to them. Hysteria is out now only on Peacock. Joined now by Dan Ige. Uh, Dan, uh, coming off an awesome uh, fight that caught a lot of headlines uh, earlier this year. Now we're we're back with a full camp. How has training and practice been going in the lead up to this fight this time around? Oh, it was really good, man. You know, I, I got back in the, into the gym uh, pretty shortly after my last fight. I didn't have any serious uh, injuries or anything, just some light bruising and whatnot. But we got back in the gym and got right back to work and looked at some things that we needed to work on. So we just focused on getting better and better and better. And then we got the call to fight Lerone Murphy and it's been a great camp. You know, I'm dialed in, uh, ready to go. And here we are a couple of days away. So it's almost go time. Usually that, usually that first question is kind of a softball question. How's camp going? But given the fact that your last fight, that was such like a huge newsworthy moment of you being a hero, stepping up, saving the car, doing, doing your due diligence to, to really put your neck out there. Uh, what kind of positive experiences did you take away from that? You know, even though it was a loss, are you bringing anything with that into this fight to kind of motivate and drive you? i just, you know, what I'm capable of, you know, self-belief, what I'm able to achieve right on zero preparation, uh, preparation and just trusting in my ability and my instincts. And, uh, man, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I know how to fight and it's just being smart and, uh, picking the right shots and uh I'm in my prime I'm ready uh, I've learned a lot I've lost a lot I've uh and I'm ready to win I'm ready to go out there and take what's mine and uh you know I have a great opponent ahead of me in Lerone Murphy number 11 in the world but this is a great opportunity for me to climb the ladder and I'm more than ready to do so was it was it kind of liberating in a weird way to like not have a full camp for that fight? You know, like using like a wrestling analogy where you're like in a bracket and you're like, oh, uh, just got to, you know, wrestle the man that's out there. I know you have the wrestling background there. Like, was it a different mentality that was positive in any way? Not not knowing at all. Yeah, I mean, not weighing in was nice, you know, not having to cut or I did weigh in, but like not having to actually fish, like cut out all the water and drain myself. Um, that was nice uh but also just showing up and scrapping you know that's what we do um it's it's so rare that you get an opportunity an opportunity to do something like that like had they called me hey you're gonna be fighting in a week that's i feel like that's even more nerve-wracking you know so four hours to me was was easy now moving ahead to this fight, you mentioned Lerone Murphy being a really tough opponent, a uh, very capable striker here. Like, what are some strengths that you have to respect in his game, and also some holes you see that you're planning to exploit on the way to the W on Saturday? You know, I think he's just uh, his well-roundedness. Um, he's uh, he's an accurate puncher, uh, sneaky. You know, he can he can fight out of both stances, as can I. Um, he's quick, as am I. He's uh he's got a you know he's got a reach advantage but you know I'll find my way and you know I, you got to make it MMA I got to make him feel the threat and feel the power and not let him get too confident um I gotta take away his confidence and take it away early. What does a win do for you in your opinion after this fight? You know, like to go from you know being the hero on the last card stepping up to now being on the main card. Uh, where would you like to see at, you end up if uh, with a hand raise here on Saturday? Um, you know, a win obviously will put me up in the rankings, but, you know, just coming off the momentum from the last fight and then this fight, I think it'll set me up for a, a nice big fight. You know, I, I don't know what that means. I don't know who that is. But, you know, as far as a name, you know, I want to fight. I want to go out there. I want to fight a legend. And, um, 
you know, keep climbing the ladder. And there's some legends ahead of me, you know, there's, there's Ortega, there's Yair, there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys that make sense. I could run it back with Emmett, but let's focus on this guy. We'll, we'll get it done. And, um, but yeah, I'm just excited for the opportunity to climb the ladder. Speaking of that, of that division, uh, the main event, uh, Tapuria versus Holloway here. Um, I'm sure you got your eyes set on that. What are your predictions for that main event? How do you see that playing out? And who do you think walks away with the belt uh, on that card? Um, it's a great fight. I, I, I see Max. Um, I think Max is going to win that fight. I think he's going to win impressively. I think his uh, his skill, like Tapuria is very skilled as well, but Max's fight IQ and his, um, you know, he knows how to fight long, knows how to fight short. His footwork's incredible. He can fight out of both stances. Um, I think he'll pose a threat, and um, I think he'll pick Tapuria apart. I don't see... Uh, Max getting knocked out either. If that's you know Tapuria's plan, I don't see that happening. And um, I'm going with Max. Other than other than your big moment earlier in the year, if you're talking about like real gutsy gutsy moments, the Holloway moment, you know, pointing down in the middle against Gaethje, leaving it all out there, kind of seems a common thread with the Hawaiian fighters. What is it about Hawaiian fighters that you guys just like really kind of have the brass to like do these crazy moments in in combat sports like this? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just growing up, you know, part of the culture. It's just we're born and raised around fighting. And, yeah, it's just who we are, man. This It's in our blood and it's in our DNA. Not to be cliche or anything, but that's just what it is. The other uh, co-main, of fight, co-main event is also super interesting. Just given your uh, veteran status in, in, in combat sports, love to just pick your brain on that Robert Whitaker comes up fight. How do you think that's playing out? And what are your predictions for the co-main? that one's honestly really really hard for me to pick I've, I've i've been leaning hamza for for a while but whitaker you know incredible gas tank he has the experience to go five rounds um we seen hamza get tired uh being a five round fight it's interesting but i'm gonna pick hamza to win that fight and finally, I got to get your prediction. Uh, Babe Ruth, it call your shot for your own fight. What's the method of victory? What round? How you seen your hand getting raised against uh, Larone uh, on Saturday? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I always tell my tell everyone that I'm just prepared to go three hard rounds. Do I'm prepared to do what I need to do. Um, and I, but I will be looking for the finish. And I do see myself getting my hand raised. Well, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's a long flight. I know it's a, a long camp, especially after the last one on, on a short camp. So thank you for all your uh, preparation and time. Uh, good luck yeah. to you out there. And we'll be watching Saturday, my friend. Right on. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Get your day started with Bet the Edge. Jay Croucher, Andrew Dinzik have all your betting needs covered from MLB, NFL, college football bets, and more. New episodes drop every weekday at 6 a.m. Eastern. Whether you're targeting spreads and totals, circling player props, or looking for value in futures markets, they have it all. UFC 308 this weekend, massive stack card. Might even be better than the Sphere fight. And to help you win some money on that, we bring in our betting squad. That's Brad and Michael here to help us win some cash on this big, big stacked event. Uh, Brad, why don't you start us off? Other than the main event, is there anything you're looking at to uh, to pad the wallet a little bit here? Yeah, I'm actually looking at the Shara Bullet versus Armin Petrosian fight, and I couldn't believe the price on Shara Bullet, right? Uh, if you look at market consensus, it's about minus 175 to minus 180, um, but there are some minus 150s hanging around, which means you're getting about 30 cents of value on Shara. In this fight, you know, this is easily his most difficult UFC fight to date, but he has the striking advantage, and I still think he's kind of in that grooming stage, right? The Dana White grooming where he faces opponents that he has the advantage against because he's going to be a big name and he's going to sell a lot of fights in the future. So I took him on the money line. Yeah, we've seen it before. Dana, you know, you get on the main event, you get someone that's coming off a loss. It doesn't get much easier than that for Shara. Uh, Also, like you said, two great strikers, but Shara has a little bit more pedigree there uh, uh, with his Muay Thai. Michael, what other than the main event, what are you looking at uh, for Saturday? Yeah, all my money and my uh, all my straight money is going to be on the Kamzat Chimaev Robert Whitaker over uh, two and a half rounds. Um, when I look at Kamzat Chimaev, I think 
Um, a lot of people have this conception that he's going to go out there all crazy, try to go for the finish right away. But if you look at his past fights, when he fights those top five guys, he's a little bit more tactical in his uh, way. Like he will go out there and throw a lot of hands, a lot of a lot of heavy punches. But I kind of see him in the with this fight with Whitaker being a little bit more tactical, being okay with the takedown and holding Robert Whitaker down. Uh, so yeah, I have the over between him and Robert Whitaker. I don't think Whitaker is going to be able to stick with his grappling but I do think he's not going to have an easy ground and pound finish um, at plus 100. I think it's the best value for your money on the card. Um, he, uh, he's got a little bit of a weight cut. It's been a little bit of a delay for Kamzat Shemaev as well. Uh, it's haven't seen him. This isn't the old Kamzat that was fighting every other couple of weeks. Um, so we're not really too sure we're going to get out of him. Uh, I think he's going to lack his confidence a little bit too. Uh, me as a former athlete, I know if I was off, the mat for a little bit as well. It kind of get in my head about uh, if I was going to be ready or not. So I think we're going to see the same thing here with Kamzat Shemaev. Shemaev, two decisions in his last three fights. So he's definitely seemed to lose a little momentum here recently, which would bode well for your over bet. All right, main event time. We've got a huge one here in the featherweight division, Max Holloway versus Teporia. Uh, Max Holloway with that insane finish over Gaethje. People are still buzzing about it. Uh, Brad, why don't you start us off here? What do you think about this main event? Where can we get some money out of this fight? You know, for me, this is tough to uh, to kind of find some value in terms of just taking one straight bet. But I'll be lying if I didn't say I've just been adding Ilya Teporia money line to just about every single ticket that I've been betting throughout the week here. I think this is a really good matchup for him. We have Max Holloway who... You know, it seems like his bogey card is Volkanovski, right? Like his last three losses at the hands of the exact same guy. Then he goes out and has that Gaethje fight. And I can't lie. He looked like he's he, he's improved. He's been uh, more precise with his strikes. And also his decision-making and command of the cage looks so much better. But this is just a different monster here with Taporia, uh, a better striker, a guy who I think can just – piece max holloway apart and the difference between the two and this is going to be could be a stretch right like max holloway has not been knocked out right like he's iron chin but taporia has that legitimate knockout power and i think that could get to max it's not going to be a situation like we saw in that gaethje fight where taporia is just going to stand there and trade and bang with holloway like that's just not the kind of fighter he is he's a really intelligent fighter with a high fight iq and i think that's what ultimately leads him to win this fight yeah, Brad, um, like you said, Max is obviously going to be looking for the scrap there. We know we know what the Hawaiian fighters are ready to throw down anywhere, anytime. Spoke to Dan Ige earlier in the show here. He basically said as much. So Max looking for the scrap. To probably going to look to pick him apart, especially coming after that big Volk win. Michael, you uh, you you like the challenger here a little bit. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I uh, I do like Holloway in this fight. I, uh, I kind of see him getting the job done here. He's uh, been there before. Uh, obviously, we have Saporio who's got the knockout over Volk. But from my perception, um, I just it wasn't the same Volk. I know that he's been struggling. We, so we've seen those interviews about him. He was struggling at that part of his career, and hopefully, he's on the up and up now. So I think uh, I think those that past Volk fight isn't the same Volk that we saw that beat Max Holloway. Uh, I think that was a Volk had a little bit of a demons he was fighting. So I do believe that Max Holloway gets the job done. I think if the money line was about even, I'd be maybe taking the other side, but at plus 200, I think there's good value with taking Max Holloway in this fight. I do think that there's going to be a lot of significant strikes. I don't see this being a finish, so I wouldn't even mind taking the over as well, but my m main money will be on Max Holloway to get the job done here. Um, I've bet against him a few times before, and I can say that, I haven't come out the other side of that recently, so I'm going to hop to the other side this time and take Holloway to finally get his belt. Spoken like someone that's lost money on, on Max in the yeah. past, maybe. Uh, for those curious, Max Holloway to win by KO plus 550 on DraftKings. So if you want to put a little extra on there, it might be a repeat of the Gaethje fight, uh, which unlikely to your point, Brad, but uh, it's out there. That's what the line's at. Any closing thoughts here, guys, before we get ready? Uh, for this big Abu Dhabi card on Saturday. Brad. Yeah, I have just two things to say. Number one, like, Taporia has to win this fight because I think we've seen in the media Taporia trying to hand select and, and deny fighters the opportunity for a chance at the belt. It would go down as probably one of the worst title reigns in UFC history if he were to lose, especially get knocked out by Max Holloway. Michael, how about you? What's, uh, what's piquing your interest here as we wrap up? 
Uh, I'm just pretty excited to see Shara really go out there. I think he's going to be the future of the UFC, and you only get to see him out in these type of cards um, overseas. So he, uh, he can't fight in Vegas, so I think it's really fun when we get to see those type of fighters perform. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the bullet. That's, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. All right, guys, appreciate both of you. Uh, hopefully win our viewers a little bit of money there. That'll do it for this edition of Octagon Circles and Squares. Uh, enjoy the fights this weekend. Stay tuned to this channel for more updates. Until then, um, have some fun on the fights. See you later.